Hi, Rick Roslin here for another episode of Rick Roslin Science. And today, well, today we're going to be studying something that's all around you that you probably take for granted, but you wonder where it comes from. I have my science journal and I'm ready to go. I hope you have yours. So let's get started on an exploration of light and color. <music> So today's lesson that I'm trying to help you understand is about light. And without light, we can't have color. And so light and color are connected. And there's a lot to learn about this. Like in all things in science, you learn one thing and you get more questions. But what is light? What is light? Light is a type of energy. In fact, most of our light comes from the sun. And without the light from the sun, our plants wouldn't grow, we wouldn't be able to see, we wouldn't have colors. So light is essential to life on this planet. Uh, light is a type of energy that travels in waves, in waves. So I got my journal here. Let me show you. I, I made some notes for us and, uh, and a couple things we're going to talk about. And so light is and color, and I made a rainbow, because we're going to talk about rainbows today also. Light is, the kind of light we see from the sun is called visible light. And actually, if we turned off all the lights in here, you probably wouldn't be able to see me. Let me turn off my one light right here. And that's less light. Let's see, uh, Beaker, can you help me? I got Beaker help me today. Beaker, turn off all the rest of the lights. We'll turn them back on in a second and see. You can't see me one more beaker. Uh, oh, look, I'm gone. We need light to see. Oh, my camera's trying to come back on. Beaker, turn the lights back on, please. <laughs> so with light and too much bright light, there we go. We're back to normal. So you need light to see. The part of light that we see is called visible light. But guess what? The sun has a whole bunch of light that you don't see. Stuff like... Uh, radio waves and microwaves and gamma rays and x-rays and ultraviolet rays all come from the sun. But we see a part of light called the visible spectrum. And the fancy name for it, you probably never say this again, but next time the light's coming from the sun, just say, oh, that's electromagnetic radiation <laughs> uh, or visible light. Now, light can do a couple things. One thing it can do is that it can absorb. Objects can absorb light and objects can reflect light. And that is where we get our colors from. So some of the words we're talking about is energy. It travels in waves. Most of our light comes from the sun. Light can be absorbed, reflected, or refracted. Our visible light is white light. Now you probably have seen a rainbow before. A rainbow has all the colors, but really a rainbow is white light from the sun that gets refracted or bent into a prism. And every time you see a rainbow, you will see all the same colors. And the colors you'll see, and this is how I like to remember this, my friend, Mr. Roy G. Biv. And Roy G. Biv stands for red orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And the funny thing or the cool thing about this is, since light travels in waves, you see my little waves I've drawn here, the longest waves are the red, this side of the rainbow spectrum. And the shortest waves are the violets over here. In fact, if you want to get really short waves, that's called ultraviolet. And if you want to get really slow waves, that's called infrared. You know, when you change your uh, TV with your remote, you're using an infrared light source from a battery that you can't see, but the TV can see. Now, I got to tell you that how this story goes. 
I had a chance, and if you take a look right here, I had a chance to go to England to see a scientist who is pretty famous with light because he, when he was living in this house, and I'll give you a hint, I'm standing in front of an apple tree in a place called Warthrop, England, and and let me give you another hint. Here's the house that uh, he lived in and was born in. He went to Cambridge College. He came back when the plague was all over England and spent two years in this house. And the first thing he studied, I'll give you some more hint. This was his bedroom, and I had a chance to go into his bedroom. And there on his desk was a replica of something pretty amazing. Check this out. A prism. Anybody know who this guy is I'm talking about yet? He wrote a study about prism and light. And, of course, his name is uh, Sir Isaac Newton. And Sir Isaac Newton studied motion, but he also studied light. And he was the first to write about taking light and white light and breaking it into the colors of rainbow. There's an exhibit right there from... Uh, that museum, a natural, national or international trust in England. Now, Isaac Newton, here's a famous uh, uh, painting of Isaac Newton bringing in sunlight through the wall and into a prism. And look, there's the Roy G. Bibb, starting from the bottom, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Maybe you've seen this picture before, but it's so cool. I wanted to share this picture. It's in the Getty Museum. And so our friend Isaac Newton found a way to take a prism like this, take white light and bend it or refract it or break it into a rainbow. And every time you see a rainbow, it's because the sunlight is shining through water droplets. And all those water droplets up in the sky will bend the light and make a rainbow just like this. Next time you see a rainbow, look for the R. O-Y-G-B-I-V. Roy G. Biv. You'll always see that at the top. Every rainbow. And it's really kind of cool. Now, you have to, to have a rainbow, you have to have the sun and the water droplets just right. And, uh, you know, there's, a, we, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this. It, we'll take a look at this. This is an electromagnetic spectrum. That's a fancy word for saying uh, we have all the different light, but that's the light you can see. Check this out. See, all from the sun, all those other lights at the top, the gamma rays and the x-rays and the ultraviolet, infrared, all those different ones you cannot see. Your, your radio, your TV, radar sends waves of energy, high and low energy, that you cannot see unless uh, uh, you have some kind of a special device. So that's just a little bit of background on color and light. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Isaac Newton was was pretty amazing. In fact, uh, uh, let's see what we got right here. I want to show you uh, something that he did. He made something called, well, I, I have one right here. This is uh, from a science company. I bought this one. This is called a Newton's wheel, Isaac Newton. So let me think about this. If you can take white light and split it into a rainbow, Maybe you can take all the colors and put it back to white light. So the way this works, let me switch cameras real quick here. The way this works, and it's, it's a, uh, a wheel that he made, this experiment. Let me move my T. And you can see these different color combinations. Now, if I spin this, your eyes will start to see these colors blend into, and the faster I spin it, let me hold it up here and I'm shaking my desk. Here we go. You might see some gray, some white. There you go. Can you see the whites in there? That is so cool. Now, I thought maybe uh, you might want to try this one. So if you have a drill at home, your mom or dad has a drill, get you a piece of cardboard and color it. And you can color different colors. Let's see what happens when I when I turn on my drill. Are you ready? You know, I'll go faster. Can you see that? Let me add a little white to it. Because right now, when I shine the light on it, when I shine the light on it now, you see all the colors because they are bouncing back and forth. Here we go. But when I turn, or turn it faster, there's a homemade Newton's wheel. But hey, here's an activity you can do at home, though. I made this with my kids, and uh, 
Uh, this is an old pioneer toy called a whirligig. You can use it with a piece of cardboard or a piece of uh, a wood or, and I just use some paper right here. And so if you take a look at this, um, I, a friend of mine from years back, colored this for me, different colors, and you get to experiment with the different colors. Now, I've got a string through it, right? See how I had a string and I made a loop? And I put a little tape here. So you want to make, I'll draw a picture of this in just a second, but what you can do is you, you, you cur, tur, wind it up like that, and then by pulling it back and forth, and can you hear it whirl a gig and whirl a gig? Hopefully you guys are, are hearing me okay on the sound. It'd be better if I move my microphone up a little bit closer. All right, let's try this again. Here we go, ready? So uh, you see uh, uh, how we did this. Different colors, color both sides, make a loop, put, wind it up, and then when you pull it back and forth, you can get it going, and it starts to make a whirligig sound, but I'm more interested in what it looks like, kind of a gray. This one, the colors are gray, but you can experiment with different colors and make your own Isaac Newton wheel. Let's take a look at this. Let me draw real quick. Here's what it would look like if you were going to make one of these. Get you a piece of round cardboard or paper, put two holes close to the center, and then color it any colors you want, experiment it, loop a, a string through it, so the string goes through it, both sides, and comes out the other side, and then you can just whirl it, and I call it a whirly gig, a whirly gig. You know, the, uh, so we're going to do some experiments in the dark here, because we're talking about light, and uh, I have a flashlight, and it, it took me a long time to find these things. I tried everything in the house, uh, and I have some, these are some blue, red, and green, and we call that RGB. Your color television has this. Your color television has a bunch of little bitty red dots, blue dots, and green dots. And with all three of those, they can make all the colors. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, let's turn off the light speaker. Can you help me on this one? <laughs> we'll turn the lights off, and we'll see if we can, uh, if these, let's just see one second. Beaker, turn the rest of them off. There we go. Oh, there we go. Well, I don't know. Beaker, uh, <laughs> uh, this might be kind of hard to see, but we'll give it a shot. Let me turn one light on right here and see this. There we go. Maybe with both these lights. Uh, so I, I'm going to put these on here, and I'm going to tape the green on this one. So you can see a nice green light right here. Here's green. And I can tape a red one on. And you can do some different experiments with this. I think what I'm going to do is turn this light off so you can see these even better. Beaker, turn. let me turn that off. Here we go. So with this light, I got my green. And I have my red. And you can do some cool experiments with these. I even have something called refracting glass. Now, refracting glass is way cool. I'm going to put this on here. And this is like little bitty prisms. And I'm getting kind of weird looking with this right here. You can see. But that is refracting or prism glass. But, you know, these plastic, you probably don't have any of these plastic things with you. Uh, let's turn the lights back on, Beaker, because I have something else that we can use that I think all of you have at your home. And how I set this up was I turned on, and you flip there, you go, thank you, Beaker. Beaker's not saying much, but we know he's a good helper. <laughs> so one thing you can do is get a cup or a glass, like a plastic cup, and if you put some water in it, and if you take a flashlight underneath it, what happens is it, you can see the, the, the light up on the ceiling. Here's what I'm going to do. So that's the easy to understand. But what happens if you put some food coloring in each one of them? Wonder what color of light that would make. Huh. Oh, that's going to be cool. We, I'm, I'm going to have to show you this on the ceiling. And what if you took some blue food coloring and put in one? You can actually see it when I go through there, the blueness of it. And what if you put some green food coloring in one? Well, you could do some really cool experiments with this. Let me set this up. I got a white piece of paper. And this white piece of paper might work. Put it off right here like this. 
You know, I'm doing all these things at home. And if I can do them at home, you should be able to do them at home, I hope. So here's my uh, paper set up right here. See that paper right there? And what's going to happen? Beaker, can you turn the lights off, please? And I'm going to see what happens if I uh, shine the light. Oh, look at that. I'm shining the light. Might be better if I turn them sideways. Look at that. You can see the red right here. It turns this red. Might be better if I went a little bit sideways like this, and that way you can see this better. See how it turns it red? Look, you can see the red on there? And if I switch that one for blue and green, and I start getting these colors. Well, let's go up on the ceiling. I'm going to show you the ceiling up here in my my uh, basement and see what happens if I do this. I'm going to put, I'm going to hold the cup and I'm going to put the light underneath it. And this is where it's fun in, in, your, in your house. Look at that. That is so much fun, I think, that you can hold the cup and hold the cup and put the light underneath it, just like this. Here's the cup, put the light underneath it and you get blue. If you don't have any food coloring, you get white light, or you can have some green light. You can make your own light show. All it takes is a flashlight and a cup. And it's kind of cool to shake those around. You can see the movement of those. Uh, that is a fun thing to do. So let's see if we can have the lights back on just for a second. Beaker, Beaker, if you're doing really great for me today. <laughs> a lot of activity. Um, Oh, you know why Beaker? Let me show you Beaker. Beaker's been kind of uh, having a little trouble because Beaker put on some refracting glasses. These glasses, <laughs> he's, he's doing good, stumbling around a little bit. But Beaker, are you okay? What did, what, what did you say? Uh, he said he says he's okay, but it sounded like Mimi, Mimi. Good thing Mimi, Beaker is helping me. <laughs> Rowan, I hope you're watching this. Beaker says hi, Mimi, Mimi. So Beaker has these glasses. And they look like this. These are kind of cool. They're regular glasses. But if you look close at these glasses, they actually are refracting refracting light glasses. So they, they, they make little prisms. And if I switch this to this camera, now you, now you should really see the world kind of weird. All right. So we talked about making those light out of water. And I got a few more experiments that you can try. Uh, that to explore this and this is going to be fun because there's a property of of light well let me just show you what happens <laughs> let me show you what happens when i put one drop of milk into this water right here's a clear one drop of milk here we go i'm gonna switch this camera and you see how clear it is now if i put one drop of milk in there and I turn on this light, the light's going right through it. You see how the light goes right through it, it's transparent. But if I put a drop of milk, one drop of milk, watch what happens to it. Let me stir it up a little bit. And when I put the light through it, you see that? It's all scattered. All the little milk, uh, all the little milk droplets absorb the light. Now, it's, it, it, here's what clear water looks like. See how the light, the light goes right through it? The light goes right through it. But if I add one drop of milk, it does this. And that's the same thing that happens when you see a cloudy day. You know, if it's clear, the, the, the sunlight's going right through. But a cloud, all those droplets, makes it scatter. It's called the scattering effect. And that's why clouds are white, because the light gets scattered, just like you see right here. Hey, Wonder what would happen, and you could try this experiment at home. If I put, if I put a drop of milk in my red, wonder if it's going to change the colors of, of the redness here. Let's let's find out. So here's some red. Let's put one drop of milk in there and see what happens. Maybe it's going to make it look a different type of. That's kind of cool. Look at that. It's starting to look like a, a red cloud in there, and now the light really is scattered doesn't look as clear as it used to be because all the light is getting trapped in there and that's called the scattering of light so uh, there's other cool things of light you probably played with these you know what these are don't you 
Uh, these are chemical lights or chemical luminescence. That's a fancy word for making light with a chemical reaction. We talked about chemical reactions before. So there's animals that do this. In the summer here where I live, fireflies, beep, 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 use chemicals in their body to produce light. In caves, there's fungus that sometimes makes light. And even in the ocean, there's small little creatures called diatoms, and they've been in the news lately because they live where there's really clean water, and if a porpoise or a ship or the waves go through, and they get excited and make a blue light. Let's see if these work. Let's see, Beaker, can you turn the lights off and see uh, these chemicals? I'm going to break the chemicals inside of here, and if I break it, the two chemicals can, can, ah, uh, here we go. The two chemicals can mix, and now we have chemical luminescence, but it will eventually, it will eventually stop uh, uh, working. Now, I don't know if I can even put these in, but some of the kids had these, chemical luminescence. I guess you put them in your mouth. <laughs> you can go uh, skating. I'm not going to put this in my mouth, but it's uh, it's a little uh, uh, LED light, and this one is just a little electric light, but this is chemical luminescence. Now that it's dark, I got a couple gizmos that I want to show you. I don't know if this how this one will work, but this one has a, a type of light called black lights, and it may work, it may not. I've been in some trouble with this one. Let's see if this one works. It's a little motor, and the, uh, the light hits it, and you can see it because of the light. That one's okay, but I got a, uh, I got a really a, a kind of a better one that Rowie and I like to play with. Check this one out. This one I take in the cave with me. That's the best place to bring it because it's so dark, no light. When I turn it on, I know, weird, right? Isaac, I wonder what Isaac Newton would have thought about something like that. Uh, Beaker, can you turn the lights on? I got a couple more experiments. I really, oh, this is so weird. Let me turn it off and see what happens. There we go. There we go. And you can see, see, it, the, this works because you have this thing in your eye. Your eye likes to figure things out. And you can see well, a lot of perception that these lines are moving. And you start to see patterns because your brain wants to see these patterns. All right, let me stop that and slow it down. And it looks like this. It's actually little fans with some propellers with some. These lights are not circles. These lights are just little dots. But when I turn it, it makes a circle because your mind can see that. And kind of cool. So the uh, I want to show you something else that's kind of another type of light is called laser. Now I have a laser here. And lasers come in all different sizes and colors. And this laser is a green laser. Now, you never want to look at a laser because it's a special, really strong light that can hurt you. And speaking of dangerous things, you should never, ever look at the sun without, not sunglasses, without special, special lenses that block out the radiation. Remember I told you the sun is visible and invisible light? Those things, after looking at the sun straight for just maybe 20 seconds, you can burn the back of your eyes and possibly be blinded for life. Even on a cloudy day, try not to look at the sun or a laser. Now, this laser is kind of neat. I'm going to show you what we can do with this laser. Um, it goes in a straight line. Lasers work in a straight line. In fact, light travels in a straight line unless something blocks it, absorbs it, or bends it. Okay, so let's see if we can bend some light. So I have here a glass of water. Okay, see that little glass right there? And uh, I'm gonna shine this laser through it. And I have two, two, uh, two glasses right here of water. And if I shine, uh, put my, I put this guy right here so you can see it, okay. And what I wanna do is be able to shine this laser through here see what happens. Here we go. Ah, here we go. And you can see that I am shining the laser right through both of these glasses of water. And you can see it over here. What's going to happen though, this is kind of cool, you don't see the laser in, inside of here. You see it passing through and coming out the other side. In fact, let's what's going to happen though, if, we, if you want to see that laser path, let's add some milk to this second one right here and now it's still going through and we add the milk and watch 
now can you see can you see the laser I can see the laser maybe we turn the lights out just for a second you can see the laser passing through here we go thank you beaker can you see look you can see the laser right through let me show you from the side here it's going right through and it's being scattered in fact there's hardly any of it coming all the way through but you can see it going through there and that is way cool uh, let me show you one more thing. Beaker, please. Uh, turn the light on. You know, that is absorbing. I wonder if we could bend a laser. Uh, I think, so we're going to bend a laser light, I hope. <laughs> so I have some water right here. And we're going to use water to see if we can bend this. And I'm going to set it up here. Now, if you have a laser, it's a cool thing to do. If you don't, well, you just get to watch me do it and... See, you know, I, I put a little hole right here in this cup, so when I pour water in, when I pour the water in, it should come out into this bottom one right here. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to pour this in. Okay. And so I let go of this without making a mess, I hope. I'm going to put it right over here like this. I'm going to let go, and hopefully that water is going to start coming out. Oh, there we go. See how the water's coming out of there? Now what's going to happen if I find my laser, here we go, watch this, I'm going to turn my laser on and it should go right through that, but if I get it just right, we can see that water be bent down right, here we go, look at that, look, the light is being bent down, you can see how, if we turn the lights out, we'll try it, Beaker, I'm so glad you're helping me today. Oh, look at that. Look, the light. Look, now you can really see it from the side. Because, so the water is refracting the laser. And so instead of the laser going straight, it's going down into that. Cool experiment. Bending light. If I, if I miss the hole, no. But if I get it right there. And this is how fiber optics work. You, when your things that come across your TV and your computer... They're sending light, little messages of light, because light can travel so fast. How fast, you ask? <laughs> Let's get Beaker, one more help, please. How fast can light travel? Light can travel 186,000 miles per second. Now, I can't even think about that. In fact, that's 186,000 miles per second. That's how fast... A flashlight when you shoots out into space. Now, we can't do seconds, so you multiply that by 60, you get minutes. You multiply that by another uh, 60, you get a light hour. You multiply that by 24, you get a light day. You multiply that by 365, you get a light year. And that's what astronomers use to measure things so far into space. Like our sun, our sun, Sol. The light is going so fast, but it's so far away. This is crazy. It's 93 million miles away that if you turned off the sun, you can't. But if you could, the light would still be coming for seven minutes. So when you go outside tonight and look at those stars in the sky, the closest star to us is over two and a half light years away. Light years. That meant when that star, star it's called Alpha Proximity, twinkled and you see that star twinkle tonight that light has traveled for two and a half light years to get to your eyes I don't, don't do anything about it i get i get all confused when i start thinking about light we've got two more experiments that, that you can do at home and this next one has to do with mirrors and reflecting and so uh, what i've done and i've done this before you can set this if you have some mirrors in your house you can get a mirror and set it up and then get another mirror and set it up. And so the light, shine a flashlight, bounce it, bounce it, and bounce it. Set your mirrors. If you have two mirrors, is great. One mirror will work. And you can just watch where that light is shining. Well, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn this flashlight on. And I'm going to bounce this flashlight at this mirror onto my shirt. Okay? So maybe you can see, see, how, see that little light right there? A laser will, will work better, but uh, you probably don't have a light. Here we go. See, I'm shining the light this way, but I can bounce it on my face because light reflects. So if you set up a couple of these, 
boom, 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 you can make a light burglar detector. Like if your brother or your sister or your mom and dad are walking down the hallway, you can watch the shadow or the reflection of light. And if it gets changed, you know somebody broke the path of light. I'll show you how to do that really cool. Uh, so the, uh, but before we go leave light, see my shirt, it's blue. Now, the reason this shirt is blue, and this is kind of hard to understand, but white light has all the colors, but this shirt is made of matter. And when the light hits it, it soaks in all, you know, all those colors, Roy G. Biv, it soaks in the red, the orange, the yellow, Roy G, the green, but it doesn't soak in the blue. The blue gets bounced back to my eyes and your eyes. That's how, let me, I got a picture of this I, uh, I made. I found this, check this out. See this picture right here? That is white light. That is all the light hitting something white, that white block, and it bounces all back. So you see it as white. When you see something white, like this piece of paper right here, all the light is being bounced back to your eyes. None's being absorbed. When you see my blue shirt, all the light's being soaked up or absorbed, not the blue, it's being bounced back. So the color of something is the light that's reflected. So white has all the lights, but then you say, well, Rick, what about black? Huh, what about black? That's a good one. Because black, the color black soaks up all of the light and none of it gets reflected back. So if you have a black shirt on, it's good. You're going to soak up all the light. And you know this. I know you know this because you ever go outside on a hot, sunny day. If you wear a white shirt, it's cool because all that energy is being bounced off of you. You wear a black shirt on a sunny day, you're going to be sweating because you're absorbing all of that. And that always makes me wonder, could we ever have snow any color but white? Because snow stays snow cold because it reflects the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation, or what we call white light. If snow was brown or green or blue or black, it would melt a lot quicker. Here's my last project to show you. And this one, um, this one came from where uh, I used to live and teach in a country that has symbols like this. Ancient Egypt. And when I took my kids on a tour of some of the tombs in Egypt, we learned that all those tombs had been carved into the stone deep in the ground. And so when they were carved, they couldn't have torches. They didn't have flashlights. If they brought torches, it would all the soot would make the ceiling really black. And those tombs are beautifully painted and carved. How did they do it? Well, they did it by taking metal and shining it and making metal mirrors and shining the light down from the sun into the tomb so the workers could build it. So this is called the Egyptian Tomb Project. You can do it. You take a shoebox like this and you uh, you get some mirrors. If you have some mirrors, uh, these are some small plastic mirrors. Or if, you're, if, if someone has a makeup mirror, that would work, small ones. And what you do is, and I'll set this up and show you what I mean, you put a flashlight in one end of it. A flashlight goes into one end. Here we go. And I'll put my flashlight right here. I cut a hole right in the bottom of that. So when I put my flashlight in, this is like the ancient Egyptians in, uh, that were in their tombs. So there's the flashlight, and you can see it going through that hole right there. Okay, so now you have light coming in, right? Now your job is to try to get that, <laughs> to try to get that light to come out of this other hole that's way up here. So there's a hole over there and a hole way up here. So you can do that by using a small mirror, and I have a small mirror. I'm going to put this mirror, and I got a piece of clay. If you don't have clay, you can tape it. I got. A, small round piece of clay I'm going to put on the bottom of this mirror right here like this and now that light is bouncing can you see how it bounces right in there if I get it just right up oh, it fell over let's see here so I got my mirror right there you know this one even worked uh, 
It's kind of cool. See how the light is in here and it now it's bouncing. You can see it bouncing right over there on that side of the wall. So all we got to do is add one more mirror. And your job, if you don't want, if you don't want to make a, uh, a detector that's outside, you can make one inside like this in a shoebox. Boom. Oh, you see how the light is? I can see where it's going right over here. I better move this mirror right over to here. Wow, that's cool. Now I got it going in a bunch of different directions. Coming in, bouncing off, and going back and forth. Now, uh, I'm not going to spend much more time on that, but I tell you, you can make that. You can make your own Egyptian tomb showing that light reflects, light absorbs, and light refracts. Hey, have some fun. Make a whirl of gig. Get some colored water. Have your own light show. Follow in the footsteps of Isaac Newton and explore light. Thanks for watching. It's time now, Beaker. Uh, Beaker, can we turn all the lights out? We'll see what happens. See you later, guys. See you, Rowan. See you, Kylie. See you, every Wayne Township. Every Beaker, it's kind of spooky in here. We better turn some light on and go outside. What? Mimi, you mean? <laughs>